cannot jump or leap high enough to reach the spiritual world. We have to find it everywhere. These thoughts were experiments with movement itself as a language to reach the heights. For me, movement everywhere in life was the language of discovery. She was definitely a nature mystic. When you're living immersed in nature, there really isn't a way you can't follow through that body, mind, spirit connection. We are thrilled to be adding to the Ragdale campus brand new space for artists and cultural professionals to get back to work and without the distractions of daily life. It is this inaugural partnership with Ragdale that inspired a $1.5 million grant for the construction of the Sybil Shear Studio. With this addition to the Ragdale campus, we're honoring modern dance pioneer Sybil Shear and her collaborator, photographer, filmmaker, Helen Balfour Morrison. Sybil Shearer began really at a time when modern dance was burgeoning in the US. It was the late 1930s, early 40s. Ballet dancers did not study modern or jazz at that time. They were very segregated. I think she just absorbed the technique for both and found a way to use it for herself. In 1941, she had a one night only concert in the Carnegie Hall studio. And she got amazing reviews. I think she stunned people, maybe because of just her spontaneity or the fact that she did have elements of ballet and modern technique. Once she had had her debut and was so highly reviewed, she realized that she wanted to be in a place closer to nature. She had visited Chicago when she was on tour with Agnes DeMille. She loved the lake and then the open spaces in the other directions. And she had been offered a job. Helen Morrison was a, really a very famous uh, photographer. She had a one-woman show at the Art Institute. And she met Sybil when Sybil moved out here. And the, they just found that they were kindred spirits. And, they each thought about uh, what was going on inside. Sybil offered to buy a lot near Helen and her husband Bob, and a studio would be built. Now Sybil had a studio residence, and this was a very rare thing. It was written up in Dance Magazine. So Helen, in many ways, was her manager, her agent, her lighting designer. She protected her from the wilds of the entertainment business. Every dancer could envy having something like this. And she, at that time, began starting her company. She asked if I would like to join her little company. I mean, it was a group of six or eight who met two or three times a week. And we would always be rehearsing something else. Sybil was very spontaneous. She felt that her way of movement needed her kind of warm-up. And the warm-up was always different, which was tricky, but that's the way she worked. She was always coming up with something new. I think the idea of artistic purity for Sybil was to allow her body to lead her to a creative place as opposed to taking a vocabulary as it existed and working from that. A lot of civil dances were the solo against the group. And is the solo person gonna be accepted by the group or rejected by the group? That 
was a constant theme. The studio was the magic place. We could be there any time, night or day. Most artists are struggling trying to pay it by the hour, but it was civil. There was sort of a golden light streaming in from those windows that would hit the golden floor and illuminate it almost. Even the shadows seemed bright and not forbidding. There were no mirrors. The dancers at night just saw their reflection in the windows, and that was all they needed. Sybil loved the natural state of nature just as a place to create. She loved being on a property that was expansive. I feel as if Sybil was a flower child before her time because of her ideas about art. Art should reflect nature. She wasn't overly made up or fussy about her appearance. She felt free in the moment and pushed other people to be there with her at a time when the country was just starting to think about a different way of being. When Sybil performed, she was in another world. All self-consciousness was gone. You were looking at the inside. There really wasn't a Sybil Shearer style. She didn't want people to dance like her. She felt people should find their own style. But what she did was to train her body so that she could do anything. The idea that there's no performance film and only rehearsal film speaks to the thing that was most interesting to Sybil. It was the process, not the performance. I would say her work is both intellectual and energetically fluid, shifting from one state to the next in a really remarkable way. And she herself very exacting. Sybil was very attuned to the score, but her movement was her own. So she wasn't quite as literal about the score, but it really was kind of an inspiration. Sybil, in her early works, had a very comic attitude. People compared to Charlie Chaplin. One of her famous dances is called In a Vacuum and she's doing this factory job, and she kind of turns into the machine. She was the first person who could make me laugh without telling a story. It was through the physicality of her body that she gave us a, a moment of, of human understanding of ourselves. The weight of her movement was unforgettable. Oh, loss was probably the most emotional, where the society woman is very elegant and proper. But then she's got this terrible turmoil. Then she's back to being elegant again. I think for Sybil, the most important thing was the work. The energy and, and time and resource that it takes to produce uh, a show and to tour a show would take so much away from her time in the studio. Sybil did not want to tour. She did not want to have to repeat things over and over. 
And she wanted to bring things to what she thought of as really ready to present. And then she would give it her all, and then she would feel emptied out. And she often said, I had to rest in order to bring that best to my audience the next time. If she wanted to take two years to create a piece, fine, there was no pressure. It could be frustrating for the dancers because we could go a couple of years without ever performing. She would make every program different. I mean, reviewers would come from New York to see her dance in Chicago after she was here, just to see what she was doing. And whatever you expected her to do would not be what she did. The last piece that Sybil choreographed for the company was Iron Butterflies, Indicata De Vita's song. And the piece was called Judgment Seeks Its Own Level. When I was looking for a piece to reconstruct, I was just so excited because we had the original costumes, all of her writings, all of her music. It's really important for me to have the dancers experience Sybil space so they too could understand where she made her work. Sybil performed for the last time at the Art Institute of Chicago in 2005. Afterwards, of course, lots of people came up and were congratulating her. We had no idea that she would die just nine months later. She had a stroke, and then a few months later had another stroke, and it really was the end. We stood around Sybil's bed, joined hands, said our goodbyes. It was very sad, and suddenly, we were in charge of her legacy. Sybil always said her legacy is that she freed movement, and you can create your own original movement. The studio was a big character in itself, but it was just becoming not usable. So, we thought, rather than try to fix up the studio, why not build a new studio? This new studio at Ragdale fulfills Sybil's wish. It mirrors her love of nature. It has windows that look out just as those on the old studio did. The space is much larger. There's a prairie that you can look out on. I think Sybil would be very pleased to see it there. There are not that many dance residencies that are really well equipped with a space that's really right for dance. There are places where people can go and find time away, but it may or may not have what's needed in terms of a studio space. So it's pretty great. The studio provides that bucolic environment for it. And in combination with Ragdale's fellowship program, it becomes a working environment as well. I'm thrilled to welcome you all here to celebrate the opening of our new building, Studio House of Dance and Music, made possible by a generous grant from Morrison Shear Foundation. To see this now, and it's uh, probably four times the size of the studio that Sybil made for herself. She would be ecstatic. The studio space is beautiful. The vista is out this window. The light that's coming in here, it's just incredible. It makes you want to dance, exactly how I felt when I walked into Sybil's original studio in Northbrook. 
I realized that the only thing I wanted to do was to find magic and be a part of the magic of the unknown. Before I go on, I throw myself away and catch myself on the way coming back. And I think that's a very good definition yeah. of what I do when I dance. 